Hello students, today we will do the explanation of geography. Chapter one, the earth in the solar system. In this chapter, we will do the following topics, which include celestial bodies, stars and constellations, the solar system, the earth and its satellites, and asteroids and meteoroids. So let us proceed with the explanation. First, let us understand what are celestial bodies. The sun, the moon, and all those objects which shine brightly in the night sky are called celestial bodies. Some celestial bodies are very big and are hot as well. They are made up of gases. They have their own heat and light, which they emit in large amount. These celestial bodies are called stars. You all will be amazed to know that sun, which can be seen so bright during the day is also a star. There are countless twinkling stars in the night sky, which are similar to the sun, but we do not feel their heat and light and they look very tiny because they are really far from us. While you watch the night sky, you notice various patterns which are formed by the groups of stars. These patterns which are formed by stars is known as constellation. For example, Ursa Major or Big Bear. One of the most easily recognizable constellation is the Saptarishi, which means a group of seven stars. In ancient times, people used to determine directions with the help of stars. The North Star indicates the North direction and is also known as a pole star. It always remains in the same position in the night sky and we can easily locate it with the help of Saptarishi. You will notice that if an imaginary line is drawn, joining the pointer stars and extend it further, it will point to the pole star. Do you see a whitish band, like a white glowing path across the sky on a clear starry night? It is a cluster of millions of stars and this band is the Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system is a part of this galaxy. In ancient India, it was imagined to be a river of light flowing in the sky. Thus, it was named the Akash Ganga. The galaxy is a huge system of billions of stars and clouds of dust and gases. There are millions of such galaxies that make a universe. The sun, the eight planets and satellites and some other celestial bodies known as asteroids and meteoroids form the solar system. We often call it solar family with the sun as its head. The sun is in the center of the solar system and it is made up of extremely hot gases. It provides pulling force that binds the entire solar system. The sun is the ultimate source of heat and light for the solar system, but that tremendous heat is not felt so much by us because even though it is very near to us, but still it is 150 billion kilometers away from the earth. Then students, there are some celestial bodies which do not have their own heat and light and they are lit by the light of the stars. And these celestial bodies are called planets. The word planet comes from the Greek word planetai, which means wanderers. The earth on which we live is also a planet. It gets all its heat and light from the sun, which is our nearest star. If we look at the earth from a great distance, say the moon, it will appear to be shining just as the moon. There are eight planets in the solar system. In the order of their distance from the sun, they are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The eight planets in the solar system move around a fixed path. These paths are elongated and is called orbit. Mercury is the nearest planet to the sun. It takes 88 days to complete one round along its orbit. Venus is considered as Earth's twin because its size and shape are very much similar to that of the Earth. Till recently, August 2006, Pluto was also considered as a planet. However, in a meeting of the International Astronomical Union, a decision was taken that Pluto, like any other celestial object discovered in recent past, may be called as a dwarf planet, which means that Pluto is no more considered a planet. 
let us now study the, about the most exciting planet on the Earth, which is the Earth. The Earth is the third nearest planet to the Sun. In size, it is the fifth largest planet. It is slightly flattened at the poles. That is why its shape is described as geoid. Geoid means Earth-like shape. Conditions favorable to support life, which are found on Earth. The Earth is neither too hot nor too cold. It has water and air, which are essential for survival. It also has life supporting gases like oxygen. And because of these reasons, Earth is called a unique planet in the solar system. From the outer space, the Earth appears blue because two thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by water. And so it is known as a blue planet. The Earth has only one satellite and that is moon. Its diameter is one quarter of the Earth. It appears so big because it is near to our planet than other celestial bodies. It is about 384,400 kilometers away from us. The moon moves around the Earth in about 27 days and com completes one spin. As a result, only one side of the moon is visible to us on the Earth. The moon does not have conditions favorable for life. It has mountains, plains, depressions on its surface. These cast shadows on the moon's surface. Now let us move on and study about the other celestial bodies in the solar system, which are the asteroids and the meteoroids. Asteroids, apart from the stars, planets, and satellites, there are numerous tiny bodies which move around the sun. These are known as asteroids. They are found between the belt orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Then meteoroids. The small pieces of rocks which move around the sun are meteoroids. Sometimes these meteoroids come near the earth and tend to drop upon it. During this process, due to friction with the air, they get heated up and burn. It causes a flash of light. Sometimes a meteor without being completely burnt falls on the surface of the earth and creates a hollow. So students, this was about a quick explanation of geography chapter one. Now let us move on and look at few questions. Question number one, why Milky Way galaxy is named as Akash Ganga also? What are planetoids? For how many times in a month full moon is visible? What was the method used in ancient times by the people to determine direction? Describe universe. What cast shadows on the moon? How much time light takes to reach the earth? And what is a geoid? So I request all of you to please go through the reading of this chapter and solve these questions. Thank you.